You know, what's important about having a transplant program here in Austin is that it is not currently available in a city that is growing at the magnitude that it's growing. Uh, I'm James Crowley and uh, I'm John Crowley. We are brothers. Yep. Well, we grew up in Northwest Hills in Austin. I guess it was the 80s or so. And, uh, you know, we just, Austin was so much of a different place. We kind of ran around the neighborhood and, you know, really active swim team. We played soccer, I played football, um, but just kind of a normal upbringing during that time period. I remember exactly when it happened. Yeah, we were at the like bus stop and grade. John would not feel well. And we'd get to the bus stop for five minutes later, he'd have to go back to the house and, you know, we didn't know what it was for a few years. They didn't know what it was, right? That was that was probably the onset of the ulcerative colitis, which was the first kind of major health thing. And it was rare that, ha you know, being diagnosed with that at such a young age. We always knew that he had um, ulcerative colitis because he was diagnosed with that when he was a child. Didn't understand that there were kind of other complications or rare things that could come out of that until he was in his early 30s when he became really jaundiced and was vomiting and was really, really sick and was diagnosed with a disease of the bile ducts called primary sclerosing cholangitis. Yeah, Seton was always our hospital, for sure. And yeah, I mean, we were four boys, two girls, so we spent a lot of time, unfortunately, at the hospital. <laughs> but yeah, it was always Seton. I don't remember going anywhere else. You know, I'd been diagnosed at Seton. I went there on an emergency, um, checked into Seton, uh, met Dr. Sperling. He became, you know, my GI doctor, and Dr. Sperling had advised us to, you know, maybe it's time to start reaching out to some facilities because your liver is going to fail and you're going to need a transplant. In any community right now, there are patients waiting on lists for solid organ transplant, and we can use um, kidney and liver transplants as an example. In this community, if you're a patient with uh, renal failure or kidney failure, uh, and you're on hemodialysis, um, you will generally be placed on a waiting list to receive a kidney transplant. And if your name or number comes up, you have to travel outside of Austin to get that care. That's very disruptive, not only for our patients, but also for their families. And we wanna be able to provide that care for them right here at home so they can have the safety and security of knowing they can receive outstanding care without having to leave Austin. You know, knowing that you can't get it at home, you're gonna to have to find it elsewhere. So, you know, we went to a couple different venues to see what would be the easiest for us as a family to deal with. And, you know, closest place was Dallas. So Jimmy was the perfect candidate. You know, we were relatively the same size. So it just, it kind of fell onto him rather quickly. Did I offer it? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I it kind of dirt it kind of came up that this was gonna happen. Um, a lot of it was the blood test, if we had the same blood type, which we do. Um, so that was part of it. And then, you know, we all had to go take physicals. It always seemed like it was gonna be me for some reason, you know, I don't know. But again, we were like the, kind of like the twins in the family too, so I don't know why. It's kind of like the second I physically could do it and I was the blood type, it was like, okay, this is gonna happen. You know, Lily, John's daughter, you know, just being so young and dad's sick and then now her uncle. That was kind of tough. I remember a few times in the hospital before it happened, like taking a walk with her or whatever. And uh, you could tell, you know, I mean, she's dealing with it, but it's probably pretty scary. If, if surgery were to happen at Seton instead of having to go out of town for this procedure, I, the impact on the family, the impact on, you know, the stress of having to go out of town to to meet all the requirements of the protocol that the, the hospital does put on you after you receive a new liver, um, the, the checkups, the blood work, and that kind of wear and tear on you as a person and trying to fit that into your schedule, I think it would just make it tremendously easier to, to do. So having to leave a community to get transplantation, the surgery itself as well as the follow-up care, it's very difficult for a family because it's not just a one-stop surgery and then you're done and back home. You are um, having follow-up treatment routinely, monthly, annually for, for your life. 
So we are very excited because we will very soon have a transplantation program that will, our goal is to be world recognized. I kind of, I kind of made a diary of my, my stay out of town. I took some doodles while I was going through my, my rehab. Jimmy and I would meet up in the hallway uh, walking, which is very important after having massive abdominal surgery. I pooped, so I get to go home. Uh, Jeannie bought us both sweatsuits. Having sweatsuits, the availability so of providing organ transplants in a community this size is long overdue. You got everything that you doing, stuff? Ready? Yeah. A community this size, which is one of the largest and fastest growing cities in the United States, should have all of the services that its citizens need without having to leave the area to feel safe and secure in the care that they're receiving. We are starting with a kidney transplant program here at Del Seton Medical Center. We then hope very quickly to transition to be able to provide liver transplants. We're going to be providing pediatric cardiac transplants. We already provide uh, adult heart transplants and eventually we hope to be able to provide heart and lung transplants and other types of organ transplants that not only are not being done here in Austin, but not being done anywhere else in the country.